My name is Andrea Meredith and I'm a professor of physiology at the University of Maryland School of Medicine. I run a basic research lab and we study a gene called KCNMA1. So KCNMA1 is a gene that encodes an ion channel and an ion channel is a protein that sits in the membrane of cells and allows electrical current to pass through. So all of the signals in the brain and in muscles are encoded by electrical signals and these ion channels regulate those electrical signals. So when the ion channels dysfunction, you get disorders of excitability like seizures or muscle disorders where the muscles don't move properly. When this gene is mutated, we get an epileptic and movement disorder phenotype. The diagnostic odyssey is complicated. Many patients end up being refractory to traditional treatments, and that will trigger a neurologist to actually pursue genetic testing for that patient. So you really need to have a genetic report in one hand, and then a phenotype of epilepsy and dyskinesia on the other hand. And those two things are not diagnostic, not solely diagnostic of this disease, but are high indicators, particularly if this dyskinesia is a very specific type called paroxysmal non-kinesigenic dyskinesia type 3. So these dyskinesia episodes are really interesting and rare and they don't look like anything else that many neurologists see in the clinic. The patients have tens or even hundreds of atonic episodes a day where they actually lose muscle tone and fall down. And so there are very serious safety issues. It has a very high um, morbidity and if not mitigated properly could even be at risk for mortality. Um, these dyskinetic episodes really don't respond to various classes of medication that seizures, atonic seizures respond to. So it's a different type of dysfunction in the brain. The patients also have seizures, but they have two distinct processes going on. They have this very high frequency uh, cataplectic type of dyskinesia, and they have seizures on top of that.